the two formulas that we are looking at today can require a little bit more algebra. So some people find them a little bit more difficult. So tomorrow quiz, and then I'll probably just give y'all some time to work in pairs, maybe with some practice test cards. I will not see y'all Thursday and there will not be anything new that you need to go and look for in Google Classroom or come get from me or anything like that. So we will probably have, well, for sure, next week we'll have our test over this unit. So on your four days off, uh, if you have some time, that's my, might be what you want to start doing, start studying for that test. All right, so we're going to look at percent mass or percent volume today. Anytime you're looking at percent, it's always part of a whole. So on both of these, we're looking at what part of the solute, that's our part, is makes up the whole solution. So solute is our part, and our whole is the whole solution. So the first one, it is percent by mass. So that's when you have a solid solute dissolved in a liquid, which is usually water. And that formula is mass of your solute divided by mass of your total solution. And then times 100, because we want it in percent. And um, it can be in grams or kilograms, either one. Uh, you just need to be consistent. All right, so let's look at one of those and then we'll look at the other one and we'll look at a couple of on the practice. It says how many grams of sodium chloride would be required to make a 10% sodium chloride solution using 50 grams of water? So my solute is my sodium chloride. So that's what I'm trying to find. I already have the percent by mass, so I'm not gonna just be filling in the formula. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work than that. So what I'm looking for now to go in it is my mass of my solution. And the solution is made up of the solvent plus the solute. So in other words, when I need my denominator, it has to be both of those added together. So I have 50 grams of water, that's my solvent. And I don't know how many grams of my solute I have. That's what I'm going to assign my X to. All right, so then we're gonna start plugging it in. So I'm gonna take it out of percent. So it becomes 0 0.1000, just move my decimal back three places. My X, my numerator is my mass of my solute. And my denominator is my mass of my total solution, which is 50 grams plus X. So that's why it becomes on some of these a little bit more algebra. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna work through all the different steps on this, kind of the long ways you may not need to do all of that each time. So when I bring that up, I get five grams plus 0.1, oops, zero, zero X is going to be equal to one X this. So to get that, what I did was I brought this up and then I did distributed it. So in other words, why am I doing that? Okay. This was 0 0.100 and I brought 50 grams plus X up. And then I distributed it. So that's where I got my five grams and that's where I got my 0 0.100 X. And I know that we don't usually write one X, we just write that as one, but I'm just kind of doing that. So you can see when I bring that over, I'm gonna have five grams is equal to 0.9 X. All right, so now we just finish it up, divide by 0.9. 
divide by 0.9. And then when I solve for my X by putting that in my calculator, you should end up with 5.56 grams of sodium chloride. Because your X was assigned to your grams of your solute and sodium chloride is my solute. So when I saw for my X, I got my answer. Anybody have any questions on any of that little math right there? We're good with it, all right. All right, all right. So just like I said, it can be a little bit more algebra. All right, and then the other formula is pretty similar, but instead of looking at mass, we're looking at volume. So this is when you have a liquid solute is mixed with a liquid solvent. And once again, that's usually water. Your units can be milliliters or liters, but once again, they just have to be consistent. So my formula is percent volume is going to be, once again, my part is going to be the volume of my solute and then the volume of my total solution on the bottom. And multiplying by 100 since we want it in percent. All right, so our example is gonna be very similar to the example we looked at. It said, how many milliliters of ethanol would be required to make a 20% ethanol solution? So that is telling you that ethanol is my solute. So once again, that's going to be my unknown, my numerator. And it says I'm using 400 mils of water. So water is my solvent. So to get my total solution, it's going to be have to be my 400 mils. That's my solvent plus whatever I solve X for, because that's going to be the volume of my solute. So once again, I'm going to get my 20% out of this out to a decimal by moving it back two places. So 0.2 is going to be equal to X. That's what I don't know. Divide it by my total solution, which is 400 mLs plus X. So once again, I go through the same process. I'm gonna bring that up. So whenever I do that, I end up getting 80 mLs plus 0.2 X is equal to one X. Bring my 0.2 over and I would have my 80 mLs is gonna be equal to 0.8 X and then divide by 0.8. And I would finally solve for my X. So when you do that, when you take 80 divided by 0.8, you're gonna end up with 100. So real quick, I need to go and check my sig figs. That one has four and this one has four. So when I write my 100, I wanna be sure and put a decimal behind it and I need to add another zero to get it up to four sig figs. And my units are in mils. All right, any questions on that? Questions, comments? All right, let's look at your practice and we'll just kind of do a couple on those. All right, so we'll just look at number one. All right, I want you to read over number one. So is number one going to be harder, easier, the same as ones we did in our notes? Who votes for harder? Who votes for the same? Who votes easier? I vote easier. Because really, on this one, you're just filling in the formula, right? You don't even have to have an X. You're actually solving for your percent. 
So it says mass of my five grams of iron sulfate. So that is your solute. The grams of your solvent, solute. And then my solution, what's going to be my total for my solution? 80 grams, right? Because I'm going to take my 75, which is my water. So that's my solvent plus my solute would get me up to my 80 grams would be my total. So that would become my denominator. So this one is easier. Just putting in some numbers and solving it. Don't forget to multiply by 100 because you do want it in percent. So I end up having solute divided by total solution, which would be my 75 plus my five and then multiply by 100. And then two sig figs because of that 5.0. So that's where you get your 6.3%. And then if you notice on these, once you've solved for percent, you have to say which percent it is. So in other words, I have to say 6.3% mass or I could have just written the word mass but without knowing what type you're looking at percent that mean a lot all right why don't y'all give number two a try it's also a pretty easy one compared to the ones we were doing in our notes And if you see right there in parentheses, that's your answer, 24%. Anybody have any questions on that one? Pretty easy, all right. If you flip to number eight, it's more like the ones that we did in our notes, a little bit more algebra. So why don't you give that one a try and then I can work through it if we need to.
And that one, if you did it correctly, you see the answer is 800 mils and you do need three sick figs. Does anybody want me to work through that one? All right. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Okay, we have an um, uh, experiment requires a solution that is 80% methyl alcohol by volume. So this is my solute. What volume of methyl alcohol should be added to 200 mils of water to make the solution? So my unknown, what I'm trying to find, what my X is going to be, is going to be my volume of my solute. And once again, I know how much solvent. So to get my total solution, it's going to have to be that 200 mils plus whatever I figure out X to be so that I'll have my solvent and my solute. So I'm going to start. I'm going to move my decimal back two places. 0.8 is going to be equal to X. That's what we said we did not know at all. And then on the bottom, my total volume of my solution would be my 200 mils plus my X. All right, and then once again, I'm going to bring that up. So when I do, I end up with oops, my 0 0.800 0 times 200 plus X, and then all of that is going to be equal to 1X. All right, and then I just distribute when I multiply. So I end up with 0.8 times 200 gives me my 160 mLs plus, plus 0.8 X is going to be equal to 1 X. So I'm going to bring my 0.8 over. So that's going to give me 160 is going to be equal. So 1 minus 0.8 would leave me with 0.2. X divide by 0.2. And finally, that will solve for my X. And I need it three sig figs. So I got 800. So that's why I would need to put my decimal behind that. And my units would be milliliters. Does that help some? Alrighty, so y'all have some time to do your practice. You can either work on this one or you can pull your one out from yesterday that you're gonna have your quiz over tomorrow. And you can work on that one if you prefer. Uh, next week, probably on Wednesday, not on Tuesday. When you're not on the Tuesday when y'all come back. And then if it's close to the quiz, I may just, I may just put them on the on the test. If it's close, I don't feel like that makes it there in the end. Here, Ruby, I'll get it for you. Hold on, hold on. Stop. Let's see here, we're rambling on.